Good afternoon, people. Welcome to another episode of JF Boxing TV Live. I'm your host, Jack Fletcher. And today, we're joined by Mr. Sam Jones of S-Jam Boxing, manager of Joe Joyce, amongst many other fantastic boxers. Sam, how are you doing? I'm all right, Jack. How are you, mate? Yeah, yeah, very well. So, we're sort of midway through week eight of lockdown. It's a, it's a difficult testing, trying, challenging time for a lot of people. A lot of people have had to make, make many adjustments. You're used to being busy, traveling to press conferences, at training camps. You know, your life must have, have took a, you know, a turn upside down. How have you been adjusting to lockdown? Uh, it's been, at the beginning, it was difficult, mate, because obviously everything's 100, everything, my life's 100 miles an hour. But now, I'm just... You, I'm just kind of resigned to it. I'm just kind of resigned to whatever happens, happens. I'm, I'm in a, I'm, I'm happy. I'm like, I've, I've just moved back to my, my home, my home city in Derby. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm in a good, good place. If boxing's back when it's back. I mean, I'm lucky and fortunate enough that I've built a good company where I don't have to worry about money. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm okay. Everything, mm. everything, everything's, uh, but I know not a lot. A lot of people are in that in that position. So like, it's it's sad for a lot of. Uh, it's sad for. But it's a sad time at the moment for the whole world, not just boxing. But it's a sad time for the whole world. But we have to adjust. When this lockdown first happened, did you expect the severity to be as bad as what it has been? Um, when they locked when they locked us down, like when it was went into full lockdown, and and they started like close. I was like, yeah, this is bad. This is serious. So as soon as as soon as that was the case, but when when uh, we had a few chats, didn't we, Jack, about about it? Like before, when it was all starting off, and yeah, um, we did, we did. And I was just like, "It is what it is." Like, like I wasn't, uh, but that there was due to the government making us feel like that. Do you understand mm. what I mean? The government mm. was making us making us feel like like uh, it, like because we knew best. Apparently, the UK knew best. Like everyone else was closing shop, but the US, where we were at the time when it was starting to break out quite badly, it um, we was in the US where no one no one cared that like, everyone was just getting on with day-to-day -day life they still are kind of like that in the us now as well they're still just getting on with getting on with it uh the uk we were last to act and now it's like everyone was building bomb shelters waiting for the bomb and we just kind of let the bomb explode and then started building the shelters and like, we're, we're weeks behind everyone so it is what it is though and as i say everyone has to just adjust in regards to sort of communication with your fighters sort of joe joyce florian mark you yeah. um cody davis are you in regular communication with these yeah, guys yeah. still joe, joe i speak to joe every every day at least once a day i'll speak to my my my, my business partner my friend adam two three times a day i swear florian will message me every day saying when do i fight when do i fight <laughs> so i don't <laughs> think florian even knows what's going on but uh florian's uh florian's you can see him training. Florian is, if there's a fitter athlete, than, is, if there's a better, more professional athlete than Florian Marku in the world right now, that's like, if you had told him that we're fighting next week, he's ready to go. 12 rounds. So he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he is, if anyone deserves good things out of boxing, it's him. Guido as well. Guido training very hard as well. How do you keep? How do you keep these guys motivated, or are they just built on their own self motivation? It's, it's, it's their job. It's like the same, the same as me. Like I said, I don't have to go in there and fight, so the boys have to go in there and fight. But it's like they, they have to realize they're self employed people, mm. and say like I'm skeptical of it whether a show will happen in the United Kingdom. It can happen outside. But if say like if we get a phone call and say right, there's a show on July the first, who's ready to go? Because if you haven't trained, you 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 you're you're in trouble, aren't you? you you're not going to be the first name down on the sheets. The, the the first people to box are the ones that are the most professional. Hmm. Boris Johnson was on the the TV on Sunday. Things have adjusted a little bit. I've seen a lot of press. I've seen a lot of press releases with Eddie Hearn talking about boxing potentially coming back in July time, starting off of a cl behind closed doors event, and then following on from that you know, maybe spectator events. What's the roadmap from your point of view? Because everybody's got their own interpretation of how they think boxing is going to come back. Um, from your point of view, Sam, what, what do you think on that? I think, be, me personally, if I'm being very honest, 
I don't see crowds at boxing until next year. I really don't. I, I don't see it. It's in, how? How can you do it? Or you've been, you know what boxing events are like. I spent like a packed out hotel. You can't do it. So it will be a, for me like if if like promoters can put on shows. You've seen it like in the UFC. You've seen it. Promoters. It's very possible to put on a show. If say, like Frank Warren could. I'm not saying he will do this, but Frank Warren can and is capable, and Eddie Hearn is capable of going to New Zealand, going to USA, Florida in, in USA, or a state where they're allowing it. So it is possible to put on events. But in the United Kingdom, it's going to be, it's just, I don't know, mate, it's just going to be difficult. I, I, I personally, it can happen, but people just don't understand. They think, oh, it's just two guys having a fight. You just have to test two guys. No, you need an eight-week training camp. You need to spar three times, two to three times a week, where it means sparring partners are going to have to get tested. You're going to have to quarantine them, put them in hotels, put the, yourself in the hotels, take yourself away from the... It, there's so much logistics. I don't think people realise the logistics that are going to be involved in just putting on a four-rounder in a, in a studio. It's just going to be... It's going to be crazy. It's going to be... It's going to be incredibly different. You're going to have to... The promoters are going to really, really have to pull out the stops to, to do it. Is it a realistic proposition for, for a behind-closed-doors event to to potentially happen sort of this July? Could could that be a distinct possibility? Yeah, listen, as I, as I just said to you there, the, 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 it is possible to do it. Those things I've just mentioned are doable, correct? They're, they're doable. They're, they're, they are doable. It's just expense, manpower, like, like the the logistics involved, like, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult. I, I personally don't think, I mean, if you see, like, a fight between Dillian White and Perfect, like what Eddie earn has been saying, then I don't think that happens in the United Kingdom. I think it happens somewhere else. But I don't think, this is me just being a realist, this is my honest opinion, I don't think you're going to see big-time boxing in the United Kingdom until next year. That's what I, that's what I don't back in December, possibly December. I hope, I hope, listen, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm just being like a realist. Do you know what I mean? I'm just being a realist. Like, um, it, it's going to be difficult. It really is it, is. is it fair to say that we most likely will not see Fury Wilder free this year then at any point? I don't want to see Fury Wilder at all, let alone this year. I, I, I'm sorry <laughs> enough for that. In the last one, the conclusive winner. I don't want to see it ever again. I want to see... Fury Joshua. Fury Joshua could happen. I'm hearing whispers from 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 people to people. I'm 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 in in amongst the the circle where I believe that that fight could happen in December in Saudi Arabia. So mm. let's hope it does. I hope it happens anyway. I don't care where that fight happens as long as I get to watch it. Do you think there could be a decent chance of that fight happening? Yeah, I think I think eighty percent it could happen this year. Okay. Uh, and breaking down the strategics of, of Fury's abilities and Joshua's abilities and, and given Joshua's last fight and Fury's epic performance against Wilder, um, over a 12-round fight, how could you see that fight panning out? I've said it loads of times. I don't like to, I don't want to disrespect Joshua. So I, I like, I, I'm a fan of Joshua. I like watching him. I like watching him fight. His events are out of this world. Him and Canelo are like the do you know what I mean? Amazing, amazing, like stars of boxing. But Fury will just box his ears off. It's it's a, it's not an easier fight for Tyson Fury than, than Wilder because Wilder's a lot. When when we I've met Wilder loads of time because um, we've got a very close mutual friend Malik Scott. So we we I have a, I see Wilder quite a bit. But when the first time I met him and Joe Joyce stood next to him, I couldn't believe how skinny and like not skinny but like how slender he was. Like he could make cruiserweight easy. Wilder can make cruiserweight. So Fury adopted a tactic to just bully him because Fury's a nineteen stone man. Do you know what I mean? Walks around at that. Do you know what I mean? It's big, strong, six foot eight, six foot nine man, and he just wore him down and went through him like a hot knife through butter. So it was just, it was just, uh, it was, it was just a, it was a masterclass from Tyson. But with Joshua, Josh was a unit. Do you know what I mean? Josh was a full fledged heavyweight so I don't think Joshua would be if Fury would be able to bully him like that but he Joshua's a lot is very stiff like he's very he's very he's very um one to two left hook very very good do you know what I mean Klitschko do you know what I mean very at the same basics but Tyson Fury's just 
all the heavyweights are here, yeah? All the heavy, there's a pack of heavyweights, yeah? And then there's Tyson Fury. That's just my honest, that's just me being real. Like, he's, he's, he's another planet to everyone else. There was many people that were sceptical um, before Fury fought Wilder last time, saying that he was going to come out and Wilder was probably going to put him away. Did you expect Tyson to perform as he no. did? Were you expecting that performance? No, I knew he was capable of it, but he doesn't need to box like that. He doesn't need to take like a risk like that because he's such a he's such a great boxer. He's got a tremendous that flicky jab that he does. Um, I've been in loads of camps with Tyson and seen him spar like like box the ears off people, and he's he's an, he's another he's another level. But I thought he would just I knew I, I knew he was going to beat Wilder. I knew it because Wilder's uh, Wilder's if you you can't beat Tyson Fury with just one punch, in my opinion. Like like you you've seen it. You, you, you hit what Tyson with the best shot he's ever you, you, you can throw. Twice, you know what I mean? We hit him on the way down as well, and Tyson got up. So, how do you beat a man like that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? T Tyson's beatable. He is beatable. Everyone's beatable. Do you know what I mean? Every, everyone, there's a blue, there's, but there's no. Yeah, but how, how, the question is, Sam, how do you beat Tyson Fury? Well, it's the same way as like Muhammad Ali, who's known, who is the greatest, the greatest of all time. He lost. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? He lost. And Lennox Lewis, who I think is the greatest heavyweight to ever come out of this country. Yeah. He mm. lost. He got hit with one punch where he was, he's kind of switched off. I think like when Otto Wallin fought Tyson Fury, which was like pretty, probably the similar odds to when Rackman fought Lewis, he lost. It, he, uh, Lewis lost. And Tyson Fury, that, 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 he could have, he could have lost that fight easy. On another given day, that cut would have been stopped if it would have probably been. The other way round, the fight would have been stopped because Tyson was the A side, the main, the main attraction. So it's fortunate. Do you know what I mean? He got caught by Cunningham on earlier on in his career. Everybody's beatable. Everybody's beatable. But when Tyson's on it, when Tyson is on it, no heavyweights beating him. But someone I mean, could beat him on an off day. Someone could he could have an off day like he did against Wallin. At the so, minute, at the minute, like everybody else, a lot of people have lost structure in their lives and. And Tyson, as mentioned on, on many occasions, including in his documentary as well, that he needs structure in his life to keep his me mental health intact. And he seems to be on Instagram Live every morning smashing out these, these fitness yeah, yeah. routines. He yeah, seems mate, to be he's, focused. He's an inspiration, mate, Tyson. He's an all-time great. He, if, for me, he's in the all-time top 10 list heavyweights of all time. I don't care what anybody says, especially if he beats Joshua in convincing fashion, because that means he's the best of this era. And it's a good crop of heavyweights we're in at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So he's 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 completed boxing. He, he already has completed boxing. He completed boxing before he fought Wilder the last time. He's already done it. Now it's just all about just putting the sprinkles on his on his uh, on his amazing career. And I, and I believe he will do that. But I believe he retires after he beats Joshua. You've got a very long-standing friendship with with Tyson Fury. Um, just curious to know how, how you sort of how did you meet? How did your friendship sort of materialise? I, I met I met I met Tyson a couple of times in Derby, but like not like he wouldn't remember my name. Do you know what I mean? He wouldn't remember my name. But my, the first time I met him properly was with Asgi. Asgi was was working in um, this is years ago. This is this is years and years ago. This is Derek Chisora. Derek before the Derek Chisora fight, like years and years ago. So it's um I met him uh I met him properly there and ever since then we, we were really good friends. Like I spent time with him in the Klitschko camp. Um I was lucky enough I was lucky enough to spend some time with him there. He I, uh, I stayed in the Bolton White suite with him uh in the Bolton White suite where he was preparing for Klitschko. We used to go to David Lloyd together. Like was so he's my he's my pal, do you know what I mean? And I see him doing like when when people see this big superstar like, I just see him as in as as Tyson. Do you know what I mean? I, when I was in Big Bear, I was playing Monopoly with him. We was going around on them, you know, them them carts, the motorized carts around the shopping mall. Like we was, yeah. just, he's he's, my, he's a friend. He's a, he, he's he, but he's just done exceptionally well. He's a, he's a he's a. It's not just what he's done in the ring. It's outside the ring as well. Like what what he's mm. managed to what he's managed to achieve. So he's mm. he's a he's a legend, mate. That's what I, that's what I think of Tyson. What's your most uh, memorable memory of, of yourself and Tyson Fury. Uh, oh, mate, there's loads. There's, there's, there's just loads. I can't really probably say it on camera, right? Some, some, <laughs> some of those ones, but yeah, loads, mate. Countless smashing the watermen over his head. I was I sang some Sam, uh, Sam Cook songs with him in the Bolton White's hotel. Like 
he, he flipping oh, there's so many things mate pulling my shorts down in the middle of David Lloyd like he did loads mate, he's in, loads of funny moments with him one one memory that, that I find hilarious is I think you've, you've posted it a couple of times on your own social media um, I think it was before Joe Joyce's fight and he come in for a photo oh and he was asking <laughs> yeah 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 he's talking about Corey size it's not watershed, mate. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 just, he's, a, he's, a, he's a. You never know what you're going to get with him. But he's, but he's, he's not changed at all. Like he's not changed like the person he is. And that's like, they're the realest people. The people that don't change. Let's move on to to, to one of your your new fighters that you've just signed. Um, he's getting a lot of publicity at the minute. The, uh, he looks like a top top talent, traveling boy as well. Uh, Mister yeah. Mister John Hedges, just tell us a little bit about John. Leonardo DiCaprio, that's what we call him. Um, very good looking, talks very well, very mature for his age. Six foot five, super middleweight. Unbelievable amateur pedigree. I think he lost three amateur fights out of 48 bouts or something along those lines. Just He's he's going to be a star, mate. A proper, proper star. How did you Sat get to hear about him? Tom Little. Tom okay. Little told me about this kid, and I was just like, I looked at him. I watched his fight. Uh, he fought another travelling lad in the in the amateurs, and I thought this guy's unbelievable. He's like, do you know what I mean? He's, he was messing around. He was doing alley shuffles. He's like, he's going to be a real crowd pleaser. He sold loads of tickets as well, so not that, that matters in the current climate. But <clears throat> um, he's he's going to do very well, mate. Really excited about him. And obviously, he's 18 at the minute, and you know it, it, it's been well publicised that a lot of people think he's going to make world champion one day. Um, champion. What age do you reckon he's going to be world champion by? Would you say? I don't know, mate. It depends. Like we can take our time with him, can't we? But I believe when you're good enough, you're good enough. So we'll see. We'll just we'll take it fight by fight, and we'll we'll see when when it's time to let him off let him off the leash. I mean, from the start of this lockdown, we've seen many boxers talking about coming out of retirement. At the very start of the lockdown, it was, it was Carl Froch, Joe Calzaghe, uh, John, John Fury McFeo. Mate, it's just, John Fury don't want to come out of retirement. John Fury will just have it with you down the corner shop. I know John Fury well. Like, like I don't think Mickey Fio quite understands. Like, when John Fury sees him, John Fury will just... Put it, stick it straight on him. Like, like it's not like, oh, let's wait for the camera. John will beat you up. Do you know what I mean? He'll beat him up, and then <laughs> there won't be cameras there. He, I, he's the worst person in the world to. I'd, ra I'd rather fight Tyson Fury than John Fury. Hmm. How tough is John Fury? He's just Gypsy John, mate. Like you, you just don't. You just won't. You just won't mess with him. His hands are like a bunch of bananas, mate. You, that you didn't no, not for me, <laughs> mate. Not for me. Have you got any sort of back background knowledge on on Mick Theo? Because apparently Mick, Mickey Theo used to spar against Lenny McLean, and he had a decent amateur background as well. Mate, he's a he's a body. He's a big bodybuilder. He's a big, 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 big old bodybuilder. Okay. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's an all right guy, but I don't know whether he's trying to banter John Fury, but I don't think he quite realises that if you do say something like that to him he's taking it <laughs> he's taking it personally I remember when John Fury mm. this is when I was very young about 10 years ago John Fury said to me oh, you look like George Michael and I was just like who's he saying that to I don't want to be like George Michael and then, and then <laughs> it, it, was like, it was like dead serious and I was thinking you know, and then it stuck he calls me George how do you so, feel about that I'll let him call me whatever he likes mate no problem <laughs> Have you got any sort of memories of John Fury witnessing John Fury in an actual fight at all? Uh, no, but I've seen John Fury have many confrontations. So it's like um, many confrontational situations, and you just you just don't you're just a man you don't get on the road. John Fury is a great guy, a really good man, very honest speaking, good man. But mm. if 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 you if you he's not a guy you want to be uh, having altercations with, even at the the tender age of 53 that he is. Mm. So, John Fury, Mick Theo, Froch, Calzaghe, Bellew, Ruiz, it's just boredom from lockdown. You know, then. I think the Bellew, Ruiz fight has more legs than the others because Bellew's recently retired and I still 
I know Dave Cole was on here the other day saying, oh, no, he won't come back, he won't come back. I personally think Tony Bell, you will come back because when he was fighting Usyk, yeah, I know the camp, the, the, I know everyone says, oh, it's the camp and the build-up and stuff, but Usyk, Usyk was not winning that fight. Do you know what I mean? Only because Tony Bell, you kind of fatigued a little bit. He fatigued a little bit. But Tony Bowie was boxing fantastic in that fight. People don't realise he was up on the cards. I really do believe from the fight I was watching, from the fight I remember, I might be wrong, but I had Bowie up in the fight at the, the, until probably the last couple of rounds when, when Usyk was kind of starting to stick it on him and catch him a bit. But there's, there's something left more, more in the tank there with Bowie. I think he was in the form of his life. He had two... I know it was against a faded David A, but he still he still did very well. And it doesn't matter what anybody say. You've got David A on your record twice, and that's still some doing. Do you know what I mean? He beat. I know beat people don't think much of B J Flores, but B J Flores was a gold, a multi time Golden Gloves champion. B J Flores has a tremendous amateur background. People don't know that about B J Flores, but he was touted as the, the next big thing in America at one point. B J Flores, Tony Bowie just wiped the floor with him as well. He was having, he was coming into the best stages of his career. Um, Tony and uh, he lost to Usyk who Usyk is he's the greatest cruiserweight of all time mm. it just yeah. appears that at any given time when Tony Bowie gets asked he still appears that he's still got that fire in his belly yeah there's, there's because he took a loss on his last of his career and I, I there's just something in there where I think he's going to think to himself I need one more just to know do you know mm. what I mean I need one more just to know and I think Ruiz is kind of perfect for him. Ruiz has got fast hands, but Ruiz has got very, very slow feet. And I think that's good for someone like Tony Bowie. Tony Bowie's, got, Tony Bowie's uh, ring IQ is very, very good. Very underrated as well. Very, very good ring IQ. I think Tony Bowie could beat him. I do. I really do think that. If Tony's the same Tony as we saw the last few fights, you know what I mean? He's, he's, um, look at the win against Malunga Makabu. Um, Makabu is a current world champion at the moment Great looking, look, and looking fa looking fantastic Tony Bowie mm. battered him he got mm. put down in the first round but he battered him do you know what I mean took him out like really underrated fighter Tony Bowie even even now he's a very underrated fighter I rate him very highly even like after even when he beat David Hayes I mean the second time he was outboxing David and like David was still dangerous you know what I mean? he's always you don't lose you but he was, he was still dangerous and I, I, I don't know. I rate Tony Bowie. I think there's one there, but people like Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, uh, all those old, those old, like come on, fifty odd years old. Uh, it's just because D Nigel Ben looked amazing on the pads when he was coming to do his his comeback, but I think he sparred Craig Richards, and I think it changed his mind a bit. So. About ten days ago, there was a virtual press conference between um, Anthony Fowler. And O'Hara Davis. Now, That's for week for weeks on in, there's been a lot of bad blood between these guys. Been a lot of verbal abuse. They both want to fight each other. They both want to make the weight. What's your viewpoint on that, Sam? I would tell O'Hara's like O'Hara's my mate. I, I would tell O'Hara, don't take the fight. What do you need to take the fight? Well, Anthony Fowler's a big, a big um, super welterweight. Do you know what I mean? What is he? 154 pound at Fowler. O'Hara's O'Hara's not. Do you know what I mean? O'Hara would be a tiny welterweight. Do you know what I mean? He's he's stocky, but he's a stupid fight. I think O'Hara is very confident, obviously, with his, with yeah, his well, punching yeah. power. O'Hara is O'Hara is a, a big puncher, and he's and he's just hit some very good form. But I would tell him if I was if if that if he was asking my opinion, I would say don't don't be stupid. It's just not. I'm not interested in that fight. It's two guys in two different weight categories. I'm, there's weight categories for a reason. You saw it with. With things like Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence, uh, Canelo, Amir Khan, they're just—I'm not—I'm not interested in seeing those fights. People are saying they're not interested in that fight, but it's a fight that probably a lot of people would like to see. And at the minute, it's all yeah, about people like to see it because it, because it's public interest, isn't it? Like people, like they've had some they've had some words on on um, on social media, and it generates interest in a fight. I get it, but I'm just saying, like, I would much prefer to see Ahara Davis concentrate on Tyrone McKenna. I would prefer to see Anthony Fowler against Scott Fitzgerald. That's the fights I want to see. I don't want to see Anthony Fowler fight O'Hara Davis in a in a in a in a. It's this this. It doesn't do anything for either of their careers either. Like if Anthony Fowler beats O'Hara Davis, okay, great. He's it would probably do more for O'Hara because O'Hara's like, do you know what I mean? Fowler's Fowler's big, but then people will say Fowler's weight drained. 
So it's nonsense. It will never happen. It will never happen. So, I mean, the, the the big fights that people are talking about, obviously the lockdown's still in place. Everything's a little bit of a grey area at the minute. When are we expected to see these big fights happening again, Sam? Uh, I'd say, I'd honestly say early part of next year. In front of a crowd. Okay. And last but not least, I have seen quite a bit over the past week, um, you might be putting the gloves on. And, and fighting Mr. Heavy D for the NHS. Um, there's been a lot of trash talking between Colin, you two. Colin Newell. I said I would do that fight if the proceedings, half the proceedings went to the NHS, half the proceedings went to the kids in Palestine. That's what I'd want to do. That's the only way I'd, I'd do the fight. I mean, this guy is a super heavyweight. He's uh, knocking on to about 21 stone. What are you, Sam, about 10 stone-ish? Um, Red. 10 stone flipping heck I wish I was 10 stone I'm about 12, 12 and a half just over 12 and a half you break it up a bit Your Sam beard weighs 10 stone that big ginger beard <laughs> that big ginger beard's 10 stone <laughs> Thank you. we're losing you a bit there mate can you hear me yeah I can hear you perfect it's your crappy signal your Nottingham <laughs> signal <laughs> so um, this fight for the NHS um how will that how will that happen? I mean, how will that get organised? Obviously, it looks like a good we've spectacle. Had, we've, had about, we've had about ten offers already to put this put the show on from all different different people and different areas of the country. So, like, we've we've had loads and loads of interest already. Look, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, never mind. I'll donate some money myself. If not, I'll beat him up for for charity. I must say, Sam, you, you seem very confident in, in dismantling this guy. I mean, did you say that you was going to dance around him in the first round and then second round you were going to put him out of his misery? Mate, he's 30 stone. I could go to the post office and post a letter in the time that he's drawn his right hand back. Are you there, Sam? I can hear you. Perfect, yeah. Okay. Um... Obviously, week eight of lockdown, coming towards the end of it now. It's a difficult, it's a trying, it's a testing time for, for a lot of people. Um, Sam, I always ask people at the, at the back end of this interview if they can give any advice or guidance to people that are out there tuning in, that are probably struggling for motivation, need a bit of inspiration, just need a few tips and a few pointers. Um, what, what advice could you give? There's always light at the end of the tunnel and hard times don't last it's just keep motivated set yourself daily targets exercise learn to bake learn to cook give yourself motivation and and get pleasure out of your day that way um and realize that this is only temporary brilliant sam it's been great talking to you today um, thanks for coming on the show and uh, thanks for, for speaking to Jeff Boxing and TV Live. No problem, mate. We'll speak soon. Cheers, Sam.